morning, everybody. Thank you all for coming. Um, if you haven't yet, we have folders in the back with some handouts and you can follow the slides. Um, if not, I'm, you, you don't have to, <laughs> it's all up here. Uh, I'm Christina Farrell. I'm the adult services librarian at the Garrett County Public Library in Lancaster, Kentucky. My name is Tiffany Weston and I'm the children's librarian at Garrett County Public Library. Um, my name is Jessica Harrington and I am the former adult services librarian um, up until about six months ago. <laughs> uh, today we're going to be talking about our program, the library subscription boxes, how to do a subscription box without the price tag. We came up with this idea back in March of 2021, right in the middle of COVID. It'd been a year. We're trying to figure out we've been open and closed and back and forth with the spikes and everything. And we had been trying to figure out how to get our patrons in when they're not as willing to come in and browse and look around. We were already kind of picking books for uh, curbside pickup. And we wanted to come up with a program to kind of meet that need and maybe get our patrons back in the door. So we had decided to try to imitate the subscription boxes that are already out there for people to order and buy and get delivered to their house. But we wanted to do our library version. So we would get them, sign up for a book box, and hopefully try to get them to try new books, new genres, and maybe new authors they had never heard of before. We also wanted to add some incentives to keep each um, keep them coming back each month for more. In the box each month, we put two to three books from our collection. They are checkout books from our collection. Uh, it's actually ended up only being two for them. They get a choice between a specialty tea and a cocoa. When we first started the program, the first month they would get a charm bracelet and then with a charm, and then each month after, uh, an additional charm with a spacer. They would also get some sort of chocolate treat or um, some sort of sweet treat in there, a sticker, a feedback form, any sort of library promotional items, which at the time have not been many because we've not been able to do many programs. Uh, we put bookmarks in there, and we also have a book page subscription that comes to our library, and those weren't going out much either. Patrons just weren't picking them up and taking them, so we started putting those in the book box also. So when Christina caught, caught this idea up, she brought it to me and convinced me it was a good idea. <laughs> um, and then I had to make it look good and convince our director it was a great idea. <laughs> So the reasoning we ended up using, um, I had to set up, I ended up creating a very formal proposal, which for our very small library is unusual. Um, so I ended up trying to make it sound like we were really making some efforts here and we had some really good ideas for this. So uh, our goals were when we did this, we wanted to increase the circulation of new or lesser known authors in our collections. We had really good ideas and new books coming in, but nobody was coming in to even see them. So. We wanted to at least get them out the door into somebody's hands. Um, we wanted to promote the library, um, but we still had to respect any social distancing. We still aren't, weren't doing any in-person programming. And a lot of people were just leery of coming back into uh, buildings anymore. So it was very important to try and get those numbers up. Um, we also kind of, for our own sakes, we wanted to see what people were actually reading. Um, our community was very retired aged, but that wasn't everyone. So we knew what they liked to read, but what were kind of some of the younger people or people who were just busy that couldn't come into the library, what were they actually interested in reading? And then we wanted to develop some more reader advisory information for library staff. If people liked a particular author, a particular genre, what are some of the top picks for our community in those genres? So. <laughs> So we did like a quick cost breakdown. Um, it's all in the slides, so you don't, I don't have to go through everything here. Um, and basically I did, how much is it gonna cost total for everything? And then how much is this actually gonna cost per box? 
So I broke it down to how much is it going to cost per cardboard box, tea, cocoa, things like that. I did kind of break it down in that. And then I ended up totaling them all up. And our first box with the charm bracelets um, came into about just under four, um, $5 for the whole box, including um, the charm bracelet itself. That was the most expensive part. And we basically got those cheap from Oriental Trading. Amazon. 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 We spent a lot of time on both websites. Um, and then... Um, for every box after that, depending on whether or not they actually returned the box and we could reuse the box, um, affected the price. Um, if they returned the box and we could reuse it, it was a it was less than a dollar or right at a dollar for the cost of the box for every box going forward. If it was we had to replace the box, it added about two dollars to the cost for the box, which still isn't horrible every month for. Um, a particular program. So we, we were spending more on take and make programs at this point. So um, so when we started this, we really weren't sure how this was going to go. So the first month we did this was a very soft open. We didn't promote it really hard. It was largely our regular patrons, people we knew personally that we knew would probably at least give us a shot trying this. So we started out with eight people. Um, it was largely invite only, people we thought would be interested. Um, regular people. And then in April was supposed to be our really big push. We wanted to promote it starting in March and then hopefully we'd worked all the kinks out by then and we knew what we were doing. And then March, or then they went out in March and then the signups for April came in and we hit our cap. <laughs> so it was pretty successful. <laughs> So we put out a sign-up form. It went on. The, the eight people had the boxes. They posted on Facebook. They told our friend, their friends, and as she said, it kind of exploded right away. Our sign-up. We had to. We ended up putting our sign-up form out like a week earlier than we had planned because there were so many people asking about it and showing interest. So we had done the sign-up form through Google and put the form out. There's an example of it in your folder. Uh, we didn't put it up here, but the form was basically getting their name, their uh, contact information, you know, email, phone number, however they prefer to be contacted. And then we um, asked what genres they were interested in. And as many of you know, genres can be really hard. They are now intersecting a lot more, but we just wanted to keep it as simple as we could. So we have, you know, basic <laughs> mysteries, thrillers, romance, sci-fi, fantasy. We have a big Amish uh, interest at our library. So those, and we gave them a choice if that was something they were interested in reading, something they were willing to try, or something they had absolutely no interest in reading at all. And then we asked for their intensity level, because as you know, books will come from cozy mystery to blood and gore, or fade to black romance to independently published very spicy content. <laughs> So we did not want to give our patrons <laughs> blood and gore if they were happy with their cozy mystery. Uh, and then after that, we also asked if they were interested in what kind of drink choice, the tea the, or the cocoa. Or, and we also gave them a, a surprise option, which just gets mixed up each month. We also asked their interest in if they had favorite authors or um, content or favorite books. And we put all that it came into a, a spreadsheet that Google will um, automatically make for you when you make a form. Starting in this past November, after the success of the adult book boxes, we decided to expand based on uh, need. We had many of our regular book box patrons that were asking, well, what about my kids? My kids are interested. In fact, we'd had some teens try to sign up on the adult one and we just weren't offering that content yet. So in November, we decided to expand our program to include a YA book box. And this was to expand down to teens, um, ninth grade and up, and any adult that primarily read YA books. Uh, we did create a permission form for anybody that was under 18 and, um, and then put that out and set a smaller limit than we had for our adult boxes.
<laughs> so enter me. <laughs> I am going to be honest. I wasn't one thousand percent excited <laughs> about doing children book boxes, um, but I had at the time we had about forty. Yeah, we had, cat, we had I think they had about forty adult book boxes, and the majority of those had parent were parents that had children who kept asking, "When are we going to have junior book boxes? When are we going to have? I have a fifth grader, I have a third grader, I have a kindergartner, and so I'm like, oh, I have to do this now. <laughs> so their system is a little complicated for me. I'm not. I'm up and I go, 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 go all day. They have a lot of Excel spreadsheets and stuff. And so I had to kind of tweak it to make it work for me a lot simpler. Um, so they get one fiction and one nonfiction was what I originally started off with. Our, I don't know about you guys, our nonfiction for that age group, it's when they're little, it's skyrockets, dinosaurs and, you know, cars and all that. But about upper elementary school, we have a really hard time with like probably third through sixth grade. Um, they're not browsers. They don't, if a teacher or a friend didn't tell them about a book, they're not the ones to like go and pick a book off a shelf and look at the cover or read the blurb on it. So I wanted to get really good books in their hands that they may love, but never even knew existed. And, um, our director thought that it may be a good idea to pair it with theme it with a nonfiction. So originally I started with a like if the book was about a chef, then they got that book and then a cookbook with it. Um, if the ballerina book, the main character was a ballerina, then we went and found some nonfiction book about ballet. Um, that kind of dropped off. The kids just didn't, the older kids didn't want the nonfiction. They would rather just have two fictions. So the majority of my book boxes now just have two fiction books in them. Um, we do have a permission form. Is it one? Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, we do have a permission form, especially now with all of the the book topics and you know people coming in and complaining about certain topics. I didn't want to be giving books to children and then their parents come in and be like, "Oh my gosh, there's you know an LGBTQ character in this, and I can't believe you gave my child this book or whatever." So I wanted to make sure that they signed a permission form saying, I'm giving these books. These are options. Your child does not have to read them. If you don't like them, you know, not my fault, <laughs> basically. Um, I've limited it to 20 participants so far. I have not maxed out, but I haven't lost anybody either. I've, comp I've gained, um, I think I'm up to 18 and I've, haven't any, had anybody drop off since November. So. So creating the boxes is obviously uh, a process. Uh, as she said, we have average about 40 adult boxes that go out each month about 15 YA boxes, and she has about 15 junior boxes. So we're getting close to about 70 boxes that need to go out and be prepared each month. So two weeks before the date, and they go out the first Wednesday of each month. We've set that for each month. Um, so two weeks before, we go through the spreadsheet, which we'll go over in a minute, and I pick four book options for each person to kind of give me a variety, uh, to make it easier when it's time to pull them. Sometimes books aren't available, they're still checked out, or uh, it just didn't pop in our system that they've had it before. So having it narrowed down to four books makes it a little bit easier and facilitates the process. A week before we go and pull the books off the shelf and get them checked out. Uh, and then, uh, We've also done some things, so it helps us know what each patron's going to get so we can plan and um, personalize their boxes for them. The Friday before we put the bo boxes out, the boxes sometimes need to be fixed. We put a seal sticker on them as uh, real subscription book boxes have. 
So they have that seal to open them. So we got to peel off the old stickers. If the box has been damaged, we need to check for that to maybe create a new box for them. But it's kind of the, the handiwork of making sure the box is presentable to go back out again. And then, or create new boxes that just didn't come back that month. And then the Monday before we put all the stuff in and uh, get the boxes ready. We double check to make sure we have like a two person process. One packs it and then the other one double checks to make sure everything made it in. And then we seal it up. Uh, in total for all the boxes, I would say it takes about, about 20 working hours total. It's not all done by me. Our um, part-time circulation clerks will help. We work together and it's spread out over this time period. It's not just 20 hours right there. Um, it's just from the picking of the books all the way through packing them to go out. It's probably about 20 hours to get the boxes out and ready to go each month. As I'd mentioned the spreadsheet, this looks a lot more intimidating. This is why I did not want to do children's book boxes. It looks a lot more intimidating, intimidating. than than it is. Uh, we blocked out, because this is our actual form, so we blocked out the contact and the personal information, but we have a column with each patron's name, their contact information, how they prefer to be contact contacted. Um, we shifted this. This is not the form that Google gives you from your sheet. That one was kind of, it wasn't as user friendly to easily get the information off of it. So Jessica, our handy computer person, <laughs> coded and created this for us. Again, this is just what works for us. We created it in March of 2021. We weren't programming. We had time to sit and make this. Um, we put their drink choices in, so as we're packing the box, we could easily look. Uh, then we separated their choices in between green for this is what they want. That's primarily, you know, what we go off of, okay? Patron A, you know, loves mysteries and thrillers and historical fiction. And they'd be willing to read romance or Amish Christian, and but absolutely do not give them fantasy. They're not interested. After that, we put their notes so we could keep track of authors that they liked. So if we were looking for books, we could search up, you know, authors like Jody Picoult. We also keep track of when they started the program, when they're a brand new, uh, when they brand new register, that start month turns blue. So it lights up when we put in, oh, they just started in, you know, April of 2022. It lights up so we know we need to pack a new box with the new thing, with the actual bracelet and all of our promotional extra stuff that explains the book box, as opposed to someone who's had it regularly. Um, in the last column, you can see the other blue boxes. Uh, that's where we put the four choices for each month to say, this is the four books I'm gonna look for. Uh, if they're blue, we use it to just say they've requested something specific, or there's a specific book that I really want them to have I need to pick the very first one. That's what I need to get in their box this month. So that if we have it, we turn it different colors just to signify different things for us. But we'll pick off of there usually from first to last because they're in order for a reason. And then just to keep track and make sure I've picked four books for each person, I just keep track. I have four books for this person. If I don't have four books and it's only, if it's the number's less than four, she coded it to turn red. So I can be like, oh, I need to, add more books. I so spent way too much time on the spreadsheet. <laughs> again, uh, she'll talk about, it. she made a much simpler process. This just works for us. It's what we set up when we had a lot of time on our hands. So what's the intensity column? Oh, sorry. And then the intensity column, I skipped that one. That is just a number scale based on the intensity of their books that they chose in their sign up sheet from zero, which was fade to black, or a cozy mystery to 10, which was blood, gore, and uh, you know, spicy content. And then that would give us an idea of books that we would uh, pick for them. It helped us when we were doing our search not to search for the particularly spicy authors if we knew that they were a two. So 
it gave us an idea of like if they're lower level, definitely keep it on the lower end. If they're mid level, we can might get away with some spicy stuff, but it's gonna have to be minimum. And then if they're higher level, we're just like, eh, who knows? They want everything. <laughs> you said that was on the sheet. That is on. Yes. Yeah. That's like, on. It's like a scale. It's like they could pick their where they fed, where they felt. Yeah. And it's very subjective because. There's some people who are just like, are you sure that's where you fit? Because I don't think that's what you think it is. <laughs> so there's a few times when we went in and actually adjusted their number later based on their feedback. So yeah, genres too. You have some people who are like, I don't like fantasy, no fantasy, and then they're like, my favorite book, The Hobbit, <laughs> or Lord, and you're like, that doesn't matter. Love Harry Potter. Don't like yeah, Harry books. Potter. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But um, when I did it, I am a office supply like guru like i love it give me a good office supply aisle and i'm like yes <laughs> like pins so i don't do anything electronic it also helps that each kid has a folder this is my kids folder so um but i just have their sheet on this side that has all the registration information so this is everything that they filled out on the google form they have this i have the month their books and they get a check mark if they liked it and if they didn't they get an x mark and then I can just go through and see what they liked, what they didn't like, and just kind of go from there. And again, my age group is fourth grade. Do I made it. some exceptions. I have like a third grader. I have a second grader who is very, very high level reader. So I make some exceptions in that case, but this is like way easier. I grab three or four folders, go through the stacks, find the books and write it down, mark it off, and I don't have, I don't have spreadsheet. <laughs> <laughs> um, in addition to this, all in this uh, book box folder, we also keep track of our books. Uh, more of the new ones or lesser known authors that come in. Again, this was just for our ease of access, and we had time to sit and add books. By author, the title, we would kind of put what genres they might fall in because books are sometimes mystery and romance so we would put that on there so we didn't give a mystery slash romance to someone who was saying i absolutely have no interest in a romance book and then just um if we could find out we would add the intensity level in there so we knew who to send it to who might be interested and then a small blurb to kind of know what it was about to fit with what our patrons like major themes major tropes things like that just things we picked up in reviews we did not read every one of these books it's not possible <laughs> mm -hmm. um so that's just an example of um our mystery and then our romance one uh to just kind of keep track of those the were books. our more, most popular genres for the adults those two particularly a lot of them had crossovers but these were the two major <gasps> yes we want these books so they were a much longer list um, but we do have it for all of the major tropes, the mystery, the Amish, uh, historical fiction. And we just add to it when we get, we're a small library, so we're not getting hundreds and hundreds of books each month. So as they come in, if they're newer, James Patterson does not make this list. Everybody <laughs> knows James Patterson. And honestly, I wouldn't have time to add every single James Patterson <laughs> book that came in. He has a new one every week. Um, yeah, nor Roberts for Michaels. They're not on, you know. It's the ones that people might not know, and we're trying to, hey, here's somebody new, try it. So each month, we, um, we've added some fun treats and sometimes just extra things to um, just make the book boxes fun. We've gotten a lot of feedback from people since they are so personalized for each participant um, that they love the personalization of the box in a time where everything's kind of crazy and hectic and we're all just kind of feeling very <sighs> having us take the time to personalize and put these touches in there for each person it really means a lot to them that we're thinking of them and trying to take this time to make this box so we've made a lot of personalized things uh, some have been our monthly um, just incentives like the bracelet and the charms. Uh, when we started the YA and the junior boxes, we did, um, we figured they're, it's a younger crowd. They're not gonna be interested in the bracelet and charms. So we went with the lanyard and then they get a little enamel pin each month on theirs. 
we did, uh, Tiffany did those, if you see the Scrabble ornaments over there for Christmas on the adult book boxes. She took each name and made an ornament for each person. Uh, we've done bags, the one in the middle, uh, the blue one went in the junior boxes, again, personalized for each patron. The one in the lower corner with the, the Hogwarts baby Yoda went into to our YA boxes one month. We don't do this every month for each one, but sometimes every few months we'll just order some extra to just put in there. Um, we just started a new um, calendar in the adult boxes. I don't have a copy of the calendar in here. It's in, we have example boxes, but they have, um, if you want to, yeah. like we made a personalized calendar each month with blanks on them for each patron. Um, and each month they get two stickers that have their two books on them. That, and which is why we need a little time. So when they read their book, they can peel it off and put their on their calendar and keep track of what they're doing. Uh, we have we have a cricket. <laughs> we purchased it pre pandemic, and We've had it for several years. <laughs> and again, we had time to sit and just Tiffany, Tiffany. I can't. I I'm not That's creative. Not <laughs> <laughs> I cannot cricket for anything. You order something from me and I will make it for you. Don't mess with my cricket. <laughs> yeah, so I, Tiffany, can we do this? Can you cricket this for me? And she, uh, she crickets the stickers that peel off. She's cricketed all the personalization stuff on there. She's, we just come up with it. And I'm like, can you do this? And she's like, of course I can. <laughs> I can't. And then starting since we've hit a year anniversary on our adult book boxes, we have changed. You can only put so many charms on a bracelet. Um, you see that journal it has my name on it up there. They uh, all got a journal uh, with it. And then each month we're going to put a new pen in there and not just some big ballpoint clicky pen. We're going to try to get them some, you know, G2s or just anything kind of fancy and fun to write with. Color um, for time, I'm different color pens to just uh, and that will be their their treat each month will be this um extra pen that they'll get how are we on time uh as we mentioned earlier there's a feedback card in each box uh basically how'd you like your books and that helps us choose. Like if we gave them a book and they're like, you know what? It just was not my cup of tea. I, um, I really don't like cozy mysteries. I need a little more action in it, a little more. Uh, can you give me something like that? Uh, it helps us to make it more personalized. So, so we're not still sending them the same stuff. And they're like, I just, I'm not interested anymore. You keep sending me the same books. Uh, they can also request if we gave them book one in a series, they could say, love it please give me book two. Or I was I, watching something or I heard Reese Witherspoon's new book came out. Can you, can you put that in there next month, please? Uh, we try not to take too many requests because it's supposed to be to try to get them to expand. And if they're coming in and picking, well, I want this book and this book next month, it kind of defeats the whole purpose. Just you come in and grab that book and that book. Um, but we're not, I don't look at them and be like, <laughs> Don't pick your books. That's my job. But, we, you know, we do take it into account on that sheet when it was blue. If they're, you know, they say, I want the new Reese book. I'll look it up and I slap it on there. and That's what they want. Their thing turns blue. So I know to go find Reese's recommended book for this month. All right. So when we started this, um, our goal was to hit 10 people. 10 people registered, um, regulars that participated every month. And then with those numbers, hopefully we'd 100 books in six months checked out, which was probably really good because our numbers were garbage. <laughs> um, we quadrupled that. <laughs> Definitely within the six months, we quadrupled that for sure. Um, we hit <clears throat> almost 400 books checked out based just on book box numbers in six months. So yes, these were very popular and we, and this was with the, us having it capped at 30 for probably about four, four months, uh, just at the beginning, because we were like, 
we're not sure we're going to have time if we open this up to more people. I kept coming to Jessica. I'm like, I have more interest. Can we, how about, can we add five more? How about just five more? It's fine. I won't ever ask again. <laughs> and then two weeks later, I'd be like, how about just five more <laughs> as we keep inching up? I'm like, we can do it. We can totally do it. It's fine. So people still call and I'm like, what number are we at? And she's like 40 and I'm like, no, we're not. <laughs> So, yes, it's very popular. I'm not joking, but there is a lot of turnover for this. Um, everyone that has joined us did not stick around the entire time, we will be honest. So this was our participant chart for the last year. Um, April started at 8. We had 28 in, or March started with 8. We had 28 in April. So, yes, it was exploded. Um, word of mouth on Facebook, very much it. Um, and teachers, apparently, they talk a lot. <laughs> they were they were our biggest numbers, I would almost guarantee. But we still had people who were just like in the library and were like, what is this? What are people picking up? What are these boxes? And then they would sign up and then <clears throat> register and come in to get it. So, yeah, it took a dip right around summertime. And that's we're pretty sure that's because people were going on vacations and were getting out of their houses and did not want to come get library books. They were just busy. But it picked up again the next month. Obviously, the massive spike. Um, a lot of people sometimes they're also just got busy things were opening back up they had to go back to work things like that so but it popped back up again and it stayed pretty steadily high again and then we also threw the numbers in for the ya and the junior boxes as well um the purple is the ya and the orange is the juniors so and it's consistently pretty pretty level <laughs> they're they're probably not going away anytime soon um and i'm not even there anymore and i know this <laughs> Um, the total registrations for all groups, we had 102 registrations. This does not mean that this is 102 participants. Um, 70 of these people are still currently active. So this is our actual number. Um, 16 of them have ended, but they did participate at least two months. So they were there consistently for at least two months of this. We had three that were only one month participants. Basically, they signed up either didn't pick up a box or they picked up a box and decided they weren't really interested in continuing. Um, and then we had 13 who did not participate. And what these are, are these are people who signed up, did not have a library card or had late fines or had lost books. And when we contacted them to try to come in to fix these things so that we could get them registered in this, we tried to contact them several times and they just never showed up to do that. They never followed through with actually doing this. So we, unfortunately, we just can't check out books to someone who doesn't have a card or has late fines and hasn't dealt with them or lost books. It's, it's, it's way too much. Or they're from New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> that is actually true. <laughs> um, somebody bragged about it on Facebook and they had a family member who's like, can I get that in my library? Can I get this? Can I get signed up for this? And we're just like, uh, what was it? They, I said, you have to have a library card with us and you have to be able to come here twice a month to pick it up and we can't drop mail it, it off. Obviously. We can't mail library books to New Jersey each month. <laughs> Yeah, then she looked at the location and saw it was New Jersey yeah. and was just like, no, sorry. <laughs> Love to help you. <laughs> um, so here's the actual issues we discovered as we went along in this process. So I'll let you take this one. <laughs> uh, as with any process, we did have some hiccups that we had not foreseen when we started it. Uh, the no library count. We assumed that everybody who signed up would have a library account, that people who didn't wouldn't be interested or that they would understand what we were trying to do. That was, was not the case. Uh, we also have dealt with delayed pickup or late cancellation. After the box is already ready, they're like, you know what, I don't think I wanna continue or I just, we're going on vacation, I can't come pick it up this month. Uh, not getting the boxes back has become a little more of an issue sometimes. Like I said at first, some of our early participants are people we know personally. So I'll like text them. I'm like, hey, I need to get the boxes ready for next month. Can you just drop it off on your way to school or whatever? Uh, another big mistake we made at the beginning was when we were trying to put a nice, fun, sweet treat in there. We got those really nice, the Lindor Lind chocolate truffles, the round ones. First of all, the round ones just didn't want to fit in the box. They were round. And... We couldn't get it in there nicely. And after they 
But so we squashed them. We're like, but we have these chocolates and they're really good. And we sent them out. And a week later, a friend of mine's like, um, hey, so the books are fine. The books are fine. But my chocolate melted on the box. So we're like, OK, this is not going to work. We need to find something else. And we ended up going with um, honey sticks, like with different flavors and stuff. They're completely sealed. And they would like they're really thin, like smaller than a pencil. So they'd slide like a in. Pixie stick. Really yeah. Thin. So they slide in real nice. And then now we're switching. We're trying chocolate again, but we're getting the Ghirardelli kind of the square ones. It's fully sealed and it's flat. So <laughs> it may melt, but it's fully sealed. And if you stick it in the freezer, it'll still be square. Um, so we're trying chocolate again. We'll see if it works this time. Uh, we've also had a lack of communication trying to get a hold of them. Please come get your book box. It's ready. It's all ready. All you have to do is grab it and go. You don't, they're already pre checked out. So just Send please your come. Child in. Pick it up. Yeah, we're, it, we're good it to doesn't go matter. Um, and then lack of feedback. Many months it comes back with a blank card and we're sitting there going, I did you like it? Did you not like it? I can give you another one, but I, I don't know what, what direction to go with your boxes. Um, sometimes we would get. It's very encouraging, but like, this was fantastic, loved everything. But again, it still doesn't give anything specific to give an idea of where you're going. So you have to kind of just be like, well, hope this month is good. Uh, so those are some of the things that we've kind of had to troubleshoot as we've gone each month. As for the junior book boxes, um, I'm gonna have to redesign their feedback card. There's Our feedback cards are the same. We just changed the color scheme. We use Canva to design all of that stuff. And we just use the same thing, just change the colors to match the boxes. But, and it was super cute, but I have a set of twins and another little boy who wants to write me book reports <laughs> on the feedback cards. And I still don't know whether they like the book or not because they're just telling me about the book or it looks too daunting for them or it's just too much. And they're like, there's like five lines on there that they want me to fill out and I'm not doing it. So I have one little boy who likes everything wrote i'm not interested was blank like he put i'm willing to try or likes every genre and he never fills out a feedback card and so i'm like next month you're getting a barbie book <laughs> and i'm gonna get a feedback card from you one way or another like i'm his his books are like all over the place because i'm like do you like this do you like this do you like this do you like this crickets i'm like okay one day i'm gonna get a feedback card from that kid so what we've learned in this process, some of the things we've talked about, kids, not the best at giving not feedback. The, no. uh, and adults aren't always great either. Or they say they love it because they're little kids and they want to, you know, like, yes, you gave me these books and they're amazing. And when really they're like, I didn't like it at all, but they don't want to tell me that. So I'm thinking maybe emojis or something. I don't know. I've got to redesign the card. Uh, Assume, assume nothing. Yeah. We came into it, and I mean, you all know the phrase. <laughs> um, we assumed only people with library cards would sign up, and having to explain, no, these are checkout books, and we can't check them out to you if you <clears throat> don't have a card. Mm -hmm. Also, that they need to come back. That was the other issue. These are library books. We need them back, please. You can renew them if you need them longer. That's totally fine. But you you do still need to let us know that you are keeping, <laughs> please. And give us your boxes back. We do need that part. <laughs> yeah, it got to a point where like, we don't care about the books. Keep them another month. Keep them two months. Like, renew them. That's fine. But please bring your box back. We need that. Uh, we've also learned that the program's been primarily female, especially um, I do not have um, anybody that's not female on the adults. We do have a bigger variety on the YA and junior uh, so we need to look at how to make our program more appealing for everybody. Uh, the bracelets probably would not appeal to um, someone who wasn't more feminine. Uh, yeah, the, the goodies. Did you? One of the struggles that I have is I have a couple kids that I know are only coming to get that book box for all the free stuff inside. <laughs> and so I'm kind of like in that torn space, like, do I care? I mean, they're checking them out. I'm giving it to them. It's going to their house. 
But once I get that 20 number and they're full up, like I don't want the kids that are just coming to get all the free stuff out of it and chunking the library books back in the book drop after they get all the free stuff to take it away from a slot for a kid that really wants to read the books. So that's just one of those question marks that I'm just gonna have to figure out. It's kind of one of those tough places that you don't really, it's not really a good answer. Uh, we've also run into one book or two. We've had people say, you know what? I just, two books a month, it's just too much. I can't read two books a month. Uh, so we've talked about going down to one book, but for select patrons, whoever was interested. However, ultimately we decided to stay with two because we are picking for them. And now you don't have to read both. There's no obligation. If you don't read anything that month, we're not kicking you out. Now you have a variety. You can look and be like, I feel like a romance this month. Yeah. I'm going to read. Eh, I want a mystery. Today's so a mystery, now they have a variety. So ultimately we decided to stick with the two books instead of offering a smaller option. And, uh, we use a Facebook group for reminders. A lot of our patrons still use Facebook. I know some of the social medias are dying down, but we're also looking for more general options to kind of get it out to everybody. But we do have people, they're like, I prefer text. And we don't have, as a lot, we're small. We don't have like a texting system. So if I text them, it's me personally being like, hey friend, <laughs> your, uh, your book box is ready for this month. So we're looking, uh, we've used a Facebook group, but we're also looking for ways to be like, it's time to pick them up or, you know, they're due tomorrow. Bring your stuff back, please. Uh, lastly, and it didn't make it on here, uh, Goodreads has been a huge help. We have a couple patrons that just read so many books a month and they don't just read with us. They read on Libby, which we don't track on our systems. They read on Kindle Unlimited. They buy their own books. And we can't keep track if they've read everything, but they are really good at keeping up with Goodreads. So oftentimes we'll peek on Goodreads. What's on their TBR? What have they already read? Um, we utilize it. We have a couple patrons that just read so much. So we'll utilize it to better pick so we're not sending books home with them that they're like, well, I just bought this last week. Thanks. <laughs> I can't read anything this month. We have one patron that was like close to 300 books last year that she read. And it's really hard because you're like, everything you go to get, you're like, oh, she's already had it. Oh, she already read it. This just came out last week. And then we're like, oh, she already read it. <laughs> like, so Goodreads is like, saved us with her. So where are we going with the program in the future? Uh, we're talking about uh, possible sponsorships with local businesses. It's a small community. Hey, if this month you want to help fund uh, the goodies that are going in the box, we'll stick an ad in there for your business. Uh, we haven't we haven't spoken to anybody yet. It's just something as staff that we've talked about uh, to possibly help offset some of the costs of the book boxes. Uh, we're looking into finding plastic containers. It's hard. I, the boxes work. They're the right size. They fit in the book drop, so people don't always have to come inside. But finding a plastic container roughly the size that'll fit in the book drop that's made of quality plastic that if, you know, uh, worn pieces dropped on it, it's not going to crack and now we're still replacing. But as a more reusable option because we're having the boxes, they're cardboard, there's wear and tear, they're going in the book drops. So we're looking at plastic containers. Uh, we're also in contact with publishers to see about getting like author swag in there, bookmarks, pins, uh, pens whatever uh, to add in there for the future. Uh, in our very first month, we had our library had just signed up for Hoopla. So we'd had the pop sockets, we'd had pens, we'd had bookmarks from them. So we'd thrown all that stuff in there. And so possibly continuing that. And then picture books. <laughs> They don't fit in the boxes. <laughs> like they're crazy sizes, they're all over the place. And then two picture books doesn't seem like a whole lot for, you know, a whole month of reading for a, you know, a small child. So it's one of those things I've been asked about it over and over and over again. We'll probably eventually do it. I've just got to figure out a different yeah, system true. other than those boxes because the picture books just don't, they don't fit in there. Yeah, we have five minutes. Um, we had a little video, but we're kind of running low on time. We want to leave a little time for um, questions, if there were any. But yeah, we've gotten a lot of positive feedback on the um, book boxes, mostly just the effort in the personalization. 
uh, they seem you can make them simpler. You really can. We've seen other libraries successfully do themed book boxes and you just come in and grab one. Uh, but we've found our patrons really like the touch of the personalization. Uh, so, uh, oh, okay. <laughs> there, um, you all have folders or if you didn't get one, we have folders that have all the stuff. We gave an example of each of the sign up forms. We changed some of the sign up forms based on things we learned, like asking the question, do you have a library card? You need it. So you can see <laughs> the evolution of our sign up forms. There's examples in there. There's examples of all the cards we put in there. Uh, in the different um, formatting to match each box, uh, there are there's an example of the permission form in there and our original proposal. We also have digital um, PDFs if you're interested in that. Just email one of us. Uh, Jessica might not be as helpful because she's not with us right now. She's up I can at, forward you to them. It'd be great. But. KDLA. But uh, if you have any... Uh, spreadsheet or coding questions she would be the one to talk <laughs> yeah, to so I am on there but uh, we do have a pdf file if you want to just uh email us and that's on the slides um and we have example boxes up here if you want to come look at them some of our personalization fun things we put out are there any questions <laughs> yes you any of them? no we do not mail anything uh, we've talked to our bookmobile librarian about possibly utilizing that. He works on a two-week cycle, but we have not fully moved forward on that yet. It's mostly just come in. We work with curbside, but no, they don't get mailed at all. That would be a Mm -hmm. Our, the community, sorry, the community is kind of really small um, in general. Um, most people are pretty either in town or they're coming to town to visit anyway. So there it's mailing is an option, but I don't think we've had that demand yet. Yeah, we actually, I'm not really thought of it Be, besides the New Jersey one. It's never really come up about mailing it out to someone who couldn't make it we do have a bookmobile that runs and we have talked to him about setting something up with his patrons too we have a we dropped our bookmobile mm -hmm. yeah. right now i think you can possibly yeah. but um her circulation is actually better when it's other libraries that you're delivering books mm -hmm. Yeah. No, no. no, it's fine. <laughs> Any other questions? It's a lot, we promise. Sorry. <laughs> Since it's expanded so much, do you have a limited time to program for like so you know, you can't do things? Um, like a timeline? Give somebody else a chance to since you're yeah since um we're still not programming yet uh we're looking to start programming with summer reading coming up to that yeah we'll probably have to definitely cap it out we're at our limit i'm at my limit for adults i'm at my limit i think i could add one more ya box um and then after that if there's still a big demand for it yeah, we'll probably give them a year. Be like, you need to pause. We're going to let some other people try. As of right now, we've just been adding them because we've had the time to do it. And people have been dropping off. So yeah, people so will be we, like, I'm running out of time. I don't have time. We're getting busy. And they'll, they'll voluntarily just drop off. And that usually keeps the numbers pretty steady as, so that new people can join at that point. Um, it, it, it tends to fluctuate a little, but that tends to be so far. That was how we were handling it. Yeah, but probably with summer reading, we will implement some sort of we just haven't had to yet so we don't have a policy in place but we've talked about it uh but right now i this is really the only thing i'm doing right now until we start summer reading Did, i just had a suggestion for sure. your uh review card uh -huh. um, i found my teens also didn't like to give a ton of feedback um so i just went down to what was the title of your book five little stars on Canva that you color in and why, and they were much more likely. 
Yeah, I'm gonna have to, to do something yeah, like that. Yeah, I remember like really to just like color in two stars because of this. Yeah, it's like <laughs> it's, a, it's like a book report, and it's like a <laughs> legit book report, like talking about the characters. And I think she said something like. The development of the story was fantastic, and I'm like, and it's just like a whole thing, and I'm like, that's not what I, it's super cute, but I will send this to your teacher, and you're like, you know, thumbs up, but that's not what I needed. Yes? Or, yeah. I was surprised when this and this happened. So I still got a little bit of that, but I got a little bit more information of how it felt about the book. Um, and then we have we have one lady who she takes out a book bag for three days and there's four people there. And she takes all the all the goodies out of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm like, you read all four things in three days? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's hard because you don't want to like accuse the kid of not you know re like you're not reading this. You just wanted the candy out of it or whatever. So it's like you know. But, yeah, I could. If you're like that kid. He needs a book report. <laughs> Lose everybody else, but him. You, got yeah, to you him. have to do a book. Just don't want to talk. So, any other? All right. Thank you all for coming. I appreciate it. I hope you enjoy your the rest of your day and make it home safely. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. I love the book. <laughs> we tried to get it through in our library, but we wanted to buy. Feel free to.